Welcome everyone. My guest today is Barbara Tritz and she's a practicing biological dental hygienist in the office of Green City Dental in Edmonds, Washington. She is also the owner of Washington Oral Wellness in Kirkland, Washington, where she practice, practices oral facial myofunctional therapy. She completed her certification in biological dental hygiene through the International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology and is, a laser and is laser certified through the Academy of Laser Dentistry. Barbara's passion for all things dental spilled over to creating a blog and then a website, queenofdentalhygiene.net. She loves to share her knowledge and help others find their total body health. She lectures everywhere from local school health classes to professional continuing education courses. In 2019, Barbara received the Eufridi ADA, ADA, ADA Master Clinician Award at the annual ADHA conference in Louisville, Kentucky. And she is from the beautiful Pacific Northwest. And welcome, Barbara. We really appreciate you being on here. Well, and thank you for having me, Bridget. I am so excited to share my passion with you and your all your listeners. Yeah, so, I think you've prepared some slides. Is that correct? I have. I have. Okay, let me make sure you can share them. Okay. Okay. You should be able to share them now. All uh, right. we, we gave a little background on you. So yeah, I'll just kind of let you take over. And, you know, if you want to take questions or have me interject, I can. Otherwise, we'll just save it to the end. Um, you know, you're welcome to interject if people have questions as we go. Um, I, I am happy to stop. You know, I've got lots of information, so I can talk forever. So okay. you have to cut me off. <laughs> How long do you think is this section with the slides? Um, uh, you know, 30 to 40 minutes. Okay, perfect. So, right. okay. So, so, you know, I know that, you know, everything is centered around COVID these days. And so, um, you know, I wanted to share my dental hygiene perspective um, with a little bit of COVID thrown in because I think of dental hygienists as first responders um, in this COVID fight. And so um, I wanted to share with you some current research and, and then what I do as a biological hygienist. Um, so you've just read my bio um, and I, I am happy to answer any questions on email. My email is uh, barbaratrist at gmail.com. So we're gonna go over the holistic viewpoint, um, you know, how, how biological dentistry and hygienists differs from an allopathic uh, dental perspective. I'll throw in the research so we can look at that, what biological hygienists and dentists do that's different. And then I'll touch on oral health, gum disease, tooth decay, what other things to look for in a biological dental office. Mm. And then of course, nutrition, because we have to deal with nutrition and myofunctional disorders, uh, you know, until five years ago, I didn't even know there was such a thing as a myofunctional disorder. Mm -hmm. So even me, who's been a hygienist forever, um, I'm learning new things all the time. And then I'll have my list of home care tools and then just the goals to wrap up. So that's my, my, my PowerPoint for today. Perfect. Um, you know, dental disease is rampant. And you know, the, this is the best statistics I could get from 2012. Um, it says one out of every two Americans has periodontal disease, gum disease. When I get new patients in my practice, I would say nine out of 10 or 10 out of 10 have gum disease. Wow. So gum disease, yeah, gum disease is rampant. It is at epidemic levels. Um, even if it's just one out of two, that's still a staggering statistic. And then tooth decay is also at ep epidemic levels. You know, if you look here, we've got a baby tooth, We've got this decay here. We've got a filling here already. You know, kindergartners, 40% of kindergartners have tooth decay when wow. they get to kindergarten. And tooth decay is largely preventable. And we are doing a poor job in dentistry of transmitting that information and what other things we can do. You know, we've got fluoride everywhere and we still have tooth decay. And fluoride's a whole nother topic you know, it's a toxin. I can talk about that for another hour. Um, you know, but just just know, I, as a biological dental hygienist, I have way better tools uh, than fluoride because mm, okay. fluoride is obviously not working. Um, and then, you know, sleep apnea. Nobody's even talking about this, and this is a this is an epidemic as well. 
One billion people worldwide stop breathing while they sleep and they don't know it. And you know, the human jaws, the human face is shrinking faster than evolution would dictate. So we are doing things wrong in dentistry and not addressing growing the airway and growing kids' faces. You know, 70% of kids have braces at some point. Mm. You know, so, so we are doing a poor job of helping our patients to be healthy. Because if we don't have a healthy airway, if we don't sleep right, if we don't breathe right, we get tooth decay, we get gum disease. These are all preventable things if we would just address the root cause. And here's my, here's my, my COVID talk. Actually, let me go back. I think I missed one. Here we go. You know, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, when it combines with the gum disease pathogens, creates a super infection in the lungs. So if we are not addressing gum disease, and remember the statistic earlier, you know, 50% of the population, or in my opinion, 90% of the population has some level of gum disease. And you can look in this slide here, you know, this is gum disease. And so when the, when the periopathogens, the gum disease pathogens combines with the SARS-CoV-2 virus, it creates a super infection in the lungs. So by increasing our oral hygiene efforts, we can reduce the amount of infection that we get. Um, you know, we inhale these bacteria, we swallow these bacteria, and these bacteria go into our bloodstream and our lungs, and, and we become super sick. So patients with gum disease are nine times more likely to die from the SARS-CoV-2 virus than those without gum disease. This is the first I've heard of any of this. So fascinating. Here's the research right here. You know, from February of 2021. I know this is this is crazy. Nobody's talking about this, and this should be front page news. You know, yeah, dental sure. offices should be full of patients. And uh, you know, I'm I I have I have so many patients I don't know what to do with them all. Um, you know, but we need to address the gum disease. They are three three point five times more likely to be admitted to intensive care if they have gum disease, and they're five four point five times more likely to need a ventilator. And then gum disease plays a role in long COVID. And then people with uh, minor, ethnic minorities are at more severe gum disease. So they are especially hard hit with the CoV-2 virus. So, you know, periodontal disease is, is a crisis. And then, you know, here we, they talk more about it. Um, you know, the, the, bat, the virus can hide in the saliva and in the plaque biofilm. And the plaque biofilm is covered in this slimy, slippery stuff that nothing can penetrate. Antibiotics cannot penetrate. There's no point in taking antibiotics if you have gum disease because the bacteria are safe from antibiotics. So we need to disrupt that biofilm. And so that's what I concentrate on with my patients is how do we get in the mouth, keep it clean, get that, that pathologic plaque biofilm out of there, okay? because poor oral hygiene is the root cause. So as a biological dental office, this is Green City Dental in Edmonds, Washington. It's just a cute little office. Um, we are totally biological and biological hygiene, biological dentistry. And my biological dentist is fabulous. And she is just, she's a, a she's a, I love working with her. You know, she's half my age and 10 times my energy. Um, <laughs> you know, and it's like, why wasn't I, why didn't I learn this 20, 30 years ago? Um, and but, this is called Green City? Green right? City Dental. Yep. In Edmonds, Washington. Yes. Okay. And so everything we do is aimed at supporting the health and well-being of the whole body. It's not just a drill and fill and push pumice and buff and go, as I call uh, regular dentistry. You know, we want to use less toxins. We want to be minimally invasive. We are latex free, fluoride free, fragrance free, mercury free, uh, air abrasion. You know, less drilling is best. You know, less dentistry, the best. We use lasers. We use icon no drill fills. We are airway focused. So we grow our patients healthy right from, you know, age two and on. We emphasize nutrition. We do smart mercury removal, um, you know, it's, it's ozone and laser and it's just, it's fabulous. It's the way dentistry should be done. We focus on the whole body. 
and, and as a biological hygienist, you know, I just received my biological accreditation uh, a year ago. And you know, five years ago, I didn't even know this existed. I, I thought of biological hygienists as granola crunchy people who you know, recycled and, and didn't, know, didn't know anything. And how wrong I was. Oh my God. Oh, silly you me. come over to the good side, Barbara. I have. I am never going back. I have parted that curtain and you know it's it has made all the difference. You know, because it is kind of easy to dismiss, isn't it? It is. When, it but is. It's, it's like when absolutely. you actually learn it, you're like, why were we doing it that other way? Ever? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and I was so focused on, okay, you gotta learn how to floss and you gotta learn how to brush. And now, you know, that's just, that's just such a minor part of it. You know, I talk about, you know, removing the toxins and I talk with them and our patients about nutrition and gut health, gut health. How does gut health enter into this? And it's like, that's the crux of this, really. You know, leaky gut and gut dysbiosis is, is the root cause of most dental disease. Really? So, yeah. Um, and then exercise and sleep and how to chew properly. Our patients don't know how to chew. And they don't know how to breathe properly either. Their mouth breathing, their head forward posture, and they're not using their muscles properly. So it, it is, um, it is a, a different world in the biological viewpoint. I, talk, I do talk about oral hygiene and I show them better tools. And we talk about stress reduction because you know, if you've got stress, you've got cortisol and the cortisol is like a warm bath for the bacteria. They just love it. Oh. Um, airway development, breastfeeding, you know, breastfeeding is best feeding. Well, if we don't get breastfeeding going, then our, then our littlest ones don't develop the airway properly. And then, you know, how to have a, a mouth that is so, so fresh that somebody wants to kiss you because romance is really important. <laughs> I was so, wondering, you know, what's kissing that? mean on this list? Does that mean yeah. we are sharing your healthy mouth? Because okay, you know, good. I like it. Bacteria are contagious. So, I like, I like the kissing hygiene. thing on the list. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> and, then, and then nasal hygiene. You know, nasal hygiene is probably more important than oral hygiene. Hmm. Oh, I know. We're excited uh, so, to learn more and go deeper later. This is really okay. interesting. Yeah. So these are the things, you know, it's not just here, brush your teeth better. There's so much more in biological hygiene. All right. So this is what brought me to the other side. This is my phase contrast microscope. And I take plaque samples on every single patient, every single time. And when you see the pathogens, when you see what's going on in the mouth, it is life-changing. And it is so encouraging and enrolling. I mean, I, my patients are dedicated and they wanna see this slide improve. And, and so it is exciting. So this is what I see when I take a plaque sample from somebody with periodontal disease. This is, if you look, these are all spirochetes and spinning rods and gliding rods. And these guys right here are amoeba. And amoebas can, are parasites and they live underneath the gums of, of some patients. And this is a severe infection. And if you don't take a plaque sample, you don't know what you're dealing with. So, so this amoeba, could, is this unique to the oral? environment or could it be in other places in the body? Oh, it certainly can be in other places. I mean, okay. we, we get amoebas, uh, you know, dysentery. Isn't dysentery an amoeba? I okay. think that sounds familiar, but is this the particular kind of amoeba or uh, you don't you know? know short of doing salivary diagnostics, I don't know. Okay. You know, I, I, we would have to dig deeper. I don't have a better answer for that. No problem. But amoebas aren't supposed to be in the mouth. They aren't supposed to be under the gum line. Mm. And look at how aggressive this is. I mean, you know, amoebas, amoebas are kind of like a Trojan horse and they burrow into the gum tissue and they open it up. And then these other pathogens just flood in right behind it, just like a Trojan horse, just invade the body. You know, if you look here, you can see the spirochetes are all organized and they're aggressive. Wow. So I take plaque samples on everybody. And, you know, a two-year-old, and to a hundred year old, everybody gets a plaque sample from me because you can brush really well and do a good job on the outside, but this can be lurking underneath. And so if your immune system is strong enough to hide it, your, your hygienist isn't gonna see this. So this is a really important tool for me. I use a microscope all the time. 
and, and using this microscope has, is what brought me back to dental hygiene because otherwise I was just the cleaning lady and I'm not a cleaning lady. I am an, I'm an oral <laughs> health coach. I am a cheerleader. I am a healer. Um, and I want my patients to be healthy. You sure are. So you said this is a microscopic plaque sample? So. Yes. Yeah. So okay. I, I go underneath the gum line and I just take a piece of plaque from underneath there. Okay. So, so the reason that I did this right from the get-go is that I knew those pathogens that were in the mouth, we, can, we swallow them, we inhale them, and then they go in the bloodstream. As soon as you chew, as soon as you brush your teeth, as soon as you get your teeth cleaned, those bacteria invade your body. It takes 60 seconds for those spirochetes to get in every nook and cranny of your body. Oh. Okay. And so here's some research that connects spirochetes, which we just saw. And spirochetes' best friend, which doesn't show up on my microscope, is a pathogen called Porphyromonas gingivalis. So spirochetes, Treponema denticola, and PG, Porphyromonas gingivalis, is connected to dementia. Mm. Okay, those bacteria can pass the blood brain barrier. They create the same infection that is in the mouth. They excrete the same toxins in the brain. And what this research is talking about is the fact that maybe, just maybe, the body is making the beta amyloids and the tau proteins to protect itself from the toxins of these pathogens. So we, we really need to step up our game in dentistry. Because, you know, not only the brain, the heart, the rheumatoid arthritis, uh, you know, so many diseases could certainly be starting because of the dysbiosis in the mouth. And, you know, a hygienist without a microscope is like a doctor without a stethoscope. My mentor, Paul Kais, who started this in the 1960s, 1950s, you know, look at this. You know, this is just a slide I took of a patient last week. This is just teeming with spirochetes. And, and we're not addressing this. This is, this is what we do when, we, when our gums bleed. This is the cause. So, so you know, I, I encourage everybody out there that's listening to find a biological dentist with a, um, with a microscope. So it, when I practice holistically, you know, I'm, I'm not a crunchy granola person. I love makeup. I wear high heels. I, you know, I don't own a pair of Birkenstocks. I, you know, I probably should have more comfortable shoes, but I still practice holistically. I want to look for the root cause of the infection, then decide on what else to do. This is a medical infection. This is a medical condition, not just a, a hygiene thing. It's not just a cleaning thing. We need to get a diagnosis. We need to treat it aggressively. So when I'm looking at patients with gum disease, I am looking for why, why their immune system broke down, what is happening. So you know, if gum disease is a symptom of a bigger medical problem, a microbial dysbiosis that has taken off because of something else. You know, I, I mentioned earlier leaky gut and gut dysbiosis. That is huge. You know, so our gut lining, the food we put into our gut, if we cannot digest it, we get leaky gut. And that lining is one cell thick. And because it's one cell thick and we're eating things that shouldn't be there, like gluten, then that gut becomes permeable. And that permeability allows, you know, dead bacteria, food debris, live bacteria, pathogens, viruses, all to invade our bloodstream. And then that causes an autoimmune reaction. And gum disease and tooth decay are symptoms of that gut dysbiosis. So not addressing the gut, you know, we're never going to heal the mouth. And then we need to look at, you know, not only the, the bacterial pathogens, but also viruses. Viruses play a big role in periodontal disease, as does candida and fungal infections. And then I'm looking also for systemic diseases. You know, I have had a patient who had leukemia and with my microscope, I was able to see that, you know, it isn't a gum disease, it is something else. And I sent her to her doctor and her doctor was amazed that she came in so early uh, because she didn't have any other symptoms. And, uh, and he was able to treat her for her leukemia and, and she lived, you know, and, and I, I was, I was honored and proud that I caught it early for her. 
um, you know, mouth breathing. All of my patients with gum disease and tooth decay are all mouth breathers. Mm. Are yeah. you a fan of the mouth taping at night? Absolutely. I Yay. tape every night. Every I, night. I do too. <laughs> yep. I sleep so much better, so much deeper. You know, and sleep is really important too. You know, sleep disordered breathing and um, an acid reflux. Common, like you said. Sleep disordered breathing as well. And oh, silent reflux. So, okay. and then, you know, of course, oral hygiene. I, I want my patients to have the best oral hygiene tools and get that, that pathogenic plaque out of there. But we've got to also look at salivary diagnostics and genetics because our genes, you know, could play a role in it. We are not, we're not, you know, stuck with our genetic code though. We can override our genes. So, and then myofunctional disorders, you know, chewing and sleeping and breathing and nasal hygiene all come into play with, you know, our muscles are out of whack. And then vitamin deficiencies, that's a biggie. You know, if we don't have, if we don't have a good diet, then we don't have the immune system to fight the bacteria. And sugar, I've got a whole slide on sugar. This is, sugar is a pathogen, <laughs> it's a toxin. And what are we doing with sugar in our lives? Um, and then, you know, just better diet and nutrition. Uh, Washington State, we have cannabis here. So, so many people are smoking again. Um, and all my smokers, whether it's cigarette or cannabis, or even the smokeless tobacco and the those uh, air cigs, whatever they are. Oh, uh, yeah, the vapor, what are they called? You know, all of those, all, that creates periodontal disease. And, and heart disease, too, right? It's crazy, yeah. like palpitations and stuff. Absolutely. Really yeah. actually quite horrible for you, the vaping. <laughs> it is. So, and then drug and alcohol abuse, you know, just having a weak immune system, medications. You know, over the age of 60, they have, people have about six medications, six to seven medications. Then they hit 80 and they have about 20 medications. And if I see a patient with two or more prescription medications, I know the quality and quantity of their salivary ducts is diminished. They don't have good saliva. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, and then of course, age, you know, the older we get, the more aggressive periodontal disease gets, dexterity, you know, somebody that's 80 cannot, does not have that fine dexterity that somebody that 20 does. So, so how does that, oh, you mean for brushing? And, and yeah, floss. brushing and flossing. Gotcha. Okay. And there's no way my dad, I love my dad, but he can't floss. He, he just doesn't have that dexterity. You know, he's 88 and it's just, you know, we've got to find better tools. So, and then airway issues, which I talked about here, allergies, you know, again, mouth breathing, dental restorations. How do we clean around an implant? How do we clean around bridges? And then, you know, again, that can ties into metal fillings, you know, mercury fillings. Oh my gosh, that, that should be outlawed, mercury fillings. Um, and then dry mouth. So these are just some things that I look for in gum disease. And then, you know, tooth decay, same thing, same exact thing. You know, diet and gut dysbiosis, mouth breathing, myofunctional disorders, poor sleep, acidic environment, you know, acid reflux. All of my tooth decay patients have an acidic environment. Is it acid in or acid coming up from their gut? And that, you know, coordinates with low salivary flow and quality of saliva and, you know, poor oral hygiene. Yeah, I mean, we've got to brush better. But, you know, the thing is, you know, prehistoric man did not brush his teeth. You know, there was no hygienists running around 10,000 years ago telling people to brush and floss. Um, and, but they, had, they didn't have the pathogenic bacteria that we have today. Hmm. And they didn't have the processed foods. They didn't have the sugar. Um, and so, you know, it's not, it's not, it's the quality and quantity of the, the pathogenic bacteria when it gets over that threshold level. So, you know, oral hygiene skills, because we have to deal with this, what we're dealing with today. Um, systemic diseases. There's some people who at genetics, they have a, a weaker enamel because of their genetic, genetic mutation. And then tongue ties, lip ties. Um, you know, tongue ties and lip ties, we, we need to do a better job of identifying that because when there, there could be up to seven ties in the mouth anchoring the lips to the teeth and the tongue to the floor of the mouth. And you've got to lift that up. You've got to look at it and see if we're trapping food debris mm. you know, and sticky foods like, uh, you know, fish crackers. Fish crackers are probably the worst. 
<laughs> they want the goldfish crackers. Yeah, yeah. They're the, goldfish they're the right size, you know. But um, you know, getting that stuck between the lips, you know, sticky food. And dry. Yeah. Okay. Dry and it sticks to the lips and tooth decay. Oh my gosh, you know. And then those little fingers just can pull it out one at a time. It's uh, frequent snacking. Um, in utero, you know, moms don't get enough vitamin D. I mean, we are we are low on vitamin D, especially in the Pacific Northwest. And so we need to, you know, learn more as a as a profession. We need to learn more about nutrition and getting our our mamas healthy. And uh, aggressive tooth decay could be a part of uh, Candida albicans. Early childhood caries. Um, it's it's the bacteria and the Candida combine and exponentially explode tooth decay. And then vitamin deficiencies. Uh, tooth decay is a symptom of a vitamin fat by fat soluble vitamin deficiency. So the A, D3, K2, and E, you know, it's if you don't if you don't keep the pH of the mouth up and we don't have the fat soluble vitamins, um, we're going to get tooth decay. So so these are the things you know to look for for you know symptoms of again of a bigger problem. So I mentioned the gut, you know, dental disease starts in the gut. It causes that leaky gut and we're eating, you know, crappy food, especially gluten and causing gut dysbiosis. And we change the gut and we're feeding the bad bacteria because the bad bacteria are taking over. And then the bad bacteria are talking to the brain bacteria saying, feed me, feed me, send sugar send sugar, I'm hungry. And so we eat sugar because we have a sweet tooth. And, uh, and so this is, this is the beginning of tooth decay. So nutrition and you know, nutrition is medicine and we're not feeding our, our bodies healthy foods. Here's the slide I talked about with sugar. Um, when I read this, um, it changed everything. I stopped eating sugar. So sugar actually kills our immune system. So if you have 75 grams of sugar, which is six tablespoons, so that is a cupcake and a can of soda. That decreases your white blood cells ability to attack the pathogens, both bacterial and viral, for six hours. Mm -hmm. So if you're having a donut and uh, a latte for breakfast, and then you have something sweet in the middle of the afternoon, and then you have dessert before you go to bed, your immune system is wiped out for 24 hours. And so sugar is a toxin. And you know, we as a as a society, we need to be healthier. We need to pay attention to this because you know, throwing a mask on is not going to protect us. We need to boost our own immune system. We need to take charge of our own health. And you know, mouth breathing under a mask, a dirty mask, that doesn't do it. It's time That's true. You mouth breathe because you're not getting enough air. Yeah, and everybody's yeah. mouth breathing underneath their masks. So, you know, again, we don't get enough oxygen when we mouth breathe. Mm. And it's uh, so I, I could talk about ma masks forever. My, but um, you know, so I'm I'm more on that. Let's boost the immune system. Let's have a healthy body. Let's get well as a society and get rid of sugar. And instead, we should eat the rainbow, you know, eat healthy foods that look like food, not processed foods, not boxed foods. Let's have, you know, low sugar, refined carbs, not, 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 not boxes of uh, carbohydrates and a plant based diet, fiber, fermented foods. Let's feed the good bacteria that that are in our mouth and in our body and prebiotic foods so that the good bacteria live. Because you can't get rid of the bacteria. We have to live with them. They have to live with us. We need them. But we have to feed them food that looks like food. And then encourage all our moms to breastfeed for as long as possible. That is just, breastfeeding is best feeding. Here are my top five vitamins for oral health. Uh, vitamin D3, K2. D3, we need, we absolutely need. And most 70% of the population is deficient. D3 um, is a master hormone. And D3's best friend is vitamin K2. 
vitamin K2 is like the fountain of youth. And that keeps, when I see somebody with a lot of tartar on their teeth, I know they're short of vitamin K2. Hmm. K2 tells the calcium in the blood where to go. So if there is stuff on your teeth, barnacles on your teeth, that is, those are the minerals that should be in your teeth. And when I see it on your teeth, I also know that it's in your arteries. And so vitamin K2 helps heal uh, atherosclerosis and hardening of the arteries. So when, when we don't have enough D3, it's because we don't have enough K2 and we need, we need both of them to be healthy. And it helps, D3, D3 is awesome. It helps with sleep and it reduces uh, COVID reactions. Most folks with uh, aggressive COVID are vitamin D deficient. And then also vitamin D reduces nasal secretion. So vitamin D is magic as well. Um, for for um, vitamin C, I want liposomal vitamin C. I want real fruit. I want vitamin C out of your oranges, out of jicama, out of real, real, you know, real food, not, not just a pill. Um, it helps prevent oxidative stress. You know, when I see somebody with bleeding gum, you know, vitamin C helps with scurvy. Guess what gum disease is? Scurvy. So getting more vitamin C is important. And then of course, B complex and magnesium. So these are the things that I recommend to my patients. But I also want patients to go get blood work because I don't want them just to haphazardly adjust their own, you know, I want guidance so that I'm working with a functional medicine doctor. So we get the proper nutrition, the proper level of vitamins. Chewing. Now, who would think about chewing? You know, you think it, it's, you think that it's, we do it instinctively and properly, and we don't. You know, this is what we're giving babies. We're giving them slurpy food. They don't have to chew it. Do you think they do that because of choking? There's like a fear of choking or what is the deal? They, it is convenience. You know, you can have a kid, you don't have a mess when you have these kind of jars, bottles. What, what are these bags? Packets, things, Packets. Yeah. yeah. You know, okay. it's easy. It's no, no fuss, no muss. Um, True. You know, we need to chew because chewing grows the muscles, grows the airway, grows the bone, grows the jaw. And if we are not chewing, we are not stimulating our salivary glands. Because when you chew, you pump the salivary digestive enzymes. And we need those digestive enzymes for digestion and to eliminate our food properly. So if we have constipation, it's because we're not chewing enough, getting salivary mm. enzymes in there. And, and it, it makes us grow our faces. And then also chewing keeps our teeth clean and healthy. And so when you give a kid slurpy food, they're not growing, they're not getting an airway, they're not breathing properly. So we've got to, we've got to chew. We need to help our kids grow to their full genetic potential. I mean, who do you want to, who do you want? I mean, do you want Napoleon or do you want to? He is pretty hilarious, but he got, he's like a mouth breather for sure. Oh, he's, absolutely. Yeah. Look at his that. mouth is open. Like the whole, the whole he's movie. Got, and that's why I love this picture. He has no lower jaw. He has this, he has no cheekbones. He has, he has no jawline. He has, you know, a flat face. He's got sad eyes. He has an underdeveloped upper jaw, which is the maxilla, which means that he has an underdeveloped lower jaw. He has, you know, these sad eyes. Every, he doesn't look well. He doesn't look healthy. He doesn't look vibrant. No. You know, and then, yeah. and then look at the energy just in this picture of, I love Outlander. I have to oh, say. I don't know that show. Oh, it's, it's wonderful. <laughs> okay, yeah. I should check so, it out. You know, Sam Huglin and he's uh, Jamie in Outlander. And yes, you know, he's got this square jaw and, and he's got, you know, he's just, he, to me, he exudes health and vibrancy. And, right. You know, mouth breathers will never be healthy. And tooth decay and gum disease are a sign of this, of this myofunctional disorder. So getting our kiddos to breathe through their nose is vital because nasal so you, breathing is healthy breathing. Okay. So when you talk about the airways being open, you're saying kind of while you're chewing, you have to breathe through your nose and that's Absolutely. something you learn as you chew. 
Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. You know, the nose is for breathing. The mouth is for eating. They shouldn't, we shouldn't confuse the brain. You know, the brain needs to know that we only breathe through our nose. And don't we produce nitric oxide when we breathe through our nose? I yeah. never fully understood that, but I know it's a good thing. <laughs> well, we, we make nitric oxide in our paranasal sinuses. And okay. we need nitric oxide in order to be healthy because nitric oxide helps us heal. It opens up our blood vessels. It lowers blood pressure. And so I, that is, that's critical. If you don't have enough nitric oxide, you're not going to heal. Um, and I, so one of the tests that I do is just nitric oxide little paper strips and I check my patients when they come in. Hmm. Because if they've got bleeding gums, I know that they, they can't heal until we get their nitric oxide level up. So yes, you know, nitric oxide, it's one of my favorite topics. <laughs> okay, I'll have to have you come back. Okay. That one. All right. So here is my list of favorite things. Um, you know, when I, when I talk about toothpaste, I want it, if toothpaste is a medicine and I want it to do something for the patient, depending upon what the patient needs. So I love dental sidin. You mentioned dental sidin earlier. It is a biobotanical, it is all natural. I don't want extra chemicals in anything that I recommend. I want, I want it clean and simple. So dental sidin, dental sidin LS, which is their liposomal. Um, and I have patients work that in underneath their gum line. I have a toothpaste called Boca, which is again, all natural and it has uh, nano hydroxy particles in there that remineralizes the teeth. And so for my patients with tooth decay, I want them on Boca. Uh, Revitin is a, uh, it's a, it's a different toothpaste. It is a prebiotic toothpaste. Hmm. So it feeds the good bacteria. And it has an orange flavor as opposed to everybody's mint flavor. So it's a nice change of taste. And then common sense teeth powder, which is a baking soda toothpaste with xylitol and with nanohydroxy particles in it. So, Robert, do you think it's good to like rotate different types of toothpaste or is it not really matter? I, you know, I, I do for variety. I mean, you know, you're talking to a woman who has six electric toothbrushes on her counter and two water picks. And, uh, and probably about eight tubes of toothpaste in the drawer. So yes, you know, I want variety. I don't want the same right. toothpaste sure. all the time. Yeah, okay. And they do okay. different things. Yeah, they do. And they, just so you know, we'll put her, her website's in the Facebook link, but I'll put it on the webinar. She has all these links uh, in, on her website. So if you're like, you know, you can certainly take a screenshot or something of this, but it'll be easier to find all these things again on her yeah. website. So yes. I mean, because you've got to have the right tools for the job, you know, and depending upon what your problem is, let's, let's be more selective. So, and toothbrushes, I certainly prefer power brushes because they do a better job. A manual brush takes about 10 to 15 minutes to brush and get what? the back off. Yeah, I know. Oh it's my nice. gosh. Yeah. So, so, you know, my, my patients have all these fancy phones, but they have a manual toothbrush, which is you know, uh, about 2000 year old technology. So, you know, let's have, you know, a, as good a toothbrush as your phone, okay? Um, and so I like the Kiwi, which is a, a way different toothbrush. It, I use it vertically instead of horizontally. Um, and then of course, Sonicare and Oral-B, you know, that's, that's easy to find. Now, this one is my new favorite. Um, this is called the Sonic Fusion. It is a water pick and an electric toothbrush combined. So you've got a two for one. Hmm. So you can irrigate and brush your teeth at the same time, two minutes, one and done. And uh, so I-, I, like I yeah. yeah, we I just got too. a water pick for my son, but yeah, it's like, okay, now we gotta spend yeah, another also, three minutes. He's not gonna do picking. another two minutes of it, but you know- not it's unless I make it. <laughs> I know. Yeah, that's a good idea. I wish I had known that because he has braces. I saw on your blog, oh, you know, you do yeah. have to kind of be extra aware when you have braces. Exactly. You do. I you know, braces, braces take extra work because if you don't clean around braces, you're going to have tooth decay around the brackets. You know, food gets stuck there and then you get the braces off and you have these white patches. And those white patches are what we call white spot lesions. They're the first stage of tooth decay. So... It's, yeah, you got to clean really well. And then for, for my sensitive patients who have sensory issues, sensory processing issues, there's something called a myo munchie. You know, for patients that 
just don't have dexterity, don't have, you know, they're, they're mentally challenged. The Mayo Munchie is a, is a product that just goes in and you gently chew it. No toothpaste, no water, just chew. It gently cleans the teeth. You don't, it's, uh, it's, it's fabulous. It teaches you to keep your lips together, stimulates your saliva and hmm. cleans the teeth. So uh, it's, a, it's a unique product. And then, you know, I talked about supplements and vitamins, you know, get, get tested so that you know what you need. And then dry mouth products. Um, I have a whole list on my website, my queenofdentalhygiene.net. Type it in, dry mouth, and that'll take you to that post. Cleaning in between. You'll notice that I don't have floss on here. Mm. Now, I, I, as a hygienist, I use floss. I love floss. I, I have like six different flosses in my drawer, okay? But flossing properly is really difficult. And most people do not have the dexterity. They don't have the knowledge. Um, it's, it's more food removal for them than cleaning down below mm. the gum line. Okay. So a better tool would be a pixter or tepi um, to clean in between the teeth. Make it easy. You know, if I had to pick two, three things, I would say, you know, pick a toothpaste from this column, get the sonic fusion and use pixters or tepi. Nice, okay. You know, one, two, three, boom, let's make it easy. I do have some antibacterial products that I love um, because I want to I want to kill the bad bacteria. I want to raise the pH, kill the bad bacteria. I use ozone. I use ozone oil, water, gas. Um, so for my patients to take home, I recommend ozone oil. I also like Biocidin throat spray, the Biocidin TS, because the tonsils are filled with bacteria as well. How mm -hmm. do we inspect the tonsils? You know, spraying with Biocidin TS excellent product. I know it works. You know, I've taken a plaque sample from the tonsils and the plaque, uh, put it on a microscope and uh, put a drop of the dental side and LS on it, killed the bacteria. It was awesome. Um, and then I also have an iodine rinse, that uh, molecular iodine. And being in a, you know, biological office, you know, so many of my patients know about Lugol's. So this is actually even more, this is stronger the molecular iodine that I have. And then plain old salt water. You know, how easy can we get? In that uh, irrigator, these are some of the things that I have patients put in. So, you know, it just, it just depends again on what I see on the microscope. In the water pick? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you could put yeah. stuff in there. I well, the, so the instructions, the instructions tell you, don't put anything in here. Um, it, it'll void the warranty. But okay. you know, I want to treat the gum infection like a wound. You know, would you just put water on a cut? You would disinfect it. You would keep it clean. No, and true. so okay. bleach water, baking soda, uh, iodine, and ozone all are great disinfecting solutions. So I I want people to be healthy. And so if they break the water pick after six months of irrigating, get a new one. You know, the infection is so much more deadly than uh, buying a new water pick. Right. So, right. We spend so much money, like you said, on phones and other things. And we think, oh, you know, why should I have to buy this special toothpaste yeah. or whatever? Yeah. Um, but my, again, my audience, they're down with it. Like, yeah. I am the one or two top seller of the dental side toothpaste in the country. That's, that's my community. Like, they're, yeah, and it's, well, what is it, $30? It's not cheap. No, um, it's not. but you know, I've taken a plaque sample, like I said, and put it on a slide with dental side and LS. Um, and I sent it to a friend of mine and he sent it on to Biocidin. And that's how I got hooked up with them because it was so amazing. You know, what I saw dental side do. Oh, I've seen that video. They play oh, that at their yeah. conferences, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, and you kind of are talking in the background. Yeah. I've seen yeah. that. Yeah, this that. is really cool. I feel good because I have like a lot of these things. Um, Excellent. But you may mean my routine needs to be more regular and that kind of thing. So well, you know, it's 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 an evolution. It's a it's a it's a totally. journey. You know, the journey to be well, and uh, and then you know, incorporating nasal hygiene and xylitol products. If you get five servings of xylitol a day, so that's six to ten grams, you will reduce the amount of plaque on your teeth by. 60 to 70 percent and that's without brushing hmm. so so there's a you know a lot of good things on this list 
just to, you know, sneak in your routine. And, you know, you could do the tappies in the car. You can have, you know, as soon as I get in the car, I put a piece of xylitol in my mouth. And, and then you can brush in the shower. So lots of, lots of tools and techniques. So we sell you guys, oh, I hear you mind to go back. We sell the toothpaste, the mouthwash, the throat spray, um, and we sell a silver nasal spray called ACS um, silver nasal. So, and then we sell vitamin D. We don't sell vitamin C right now. Um, we sell B complex multivitamin. Um, and we have a coupon code for the biocidin products. I'll think about if we could like extend it to more stuff but at the minimum we'll have it for the biocidin products which helps because they, they are they're really high quality products so oh, you know, they're God. not they're not cheap but they last a long time and you don't need a lot you know no. we, we shouldn't be putting you know the dairy to swirl on the toothbrush you know all you <laughs> need is, is a pea size you know don't waste it don't, if it ends up in the sink you're wasting your toothpaste this True. is medicine and i want it to be effective so so yes, I, I'm okay. excited, you know, to have Biocidin as, as I mean, it's an excellent product. You know, and a lot of people ask, well, if I'm taking a micro, micro, antimicrobial herbs, yeah. is that a bad thing? Aren't I yeah. killing the good bacteria? And I think they said they're coming out with a very clear study that that's not the case. Yeah. But if we have so much going on in the mouth and yeah. just twice a day, we're getting a little dose of you know, herbs to balance it out. That's sort of my yeah. rationale. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's not really that much. Well, so, so you had, you were talking about, you know, getting, killing all of the bacteria. What I, what I'm looking for in all of these things is to, because these are anaerobic acidic loving bacteria. So by raising the pH and by changing the microbiome, by feeding the good bacteria, we, we, we crowd out the bad bacteria. And so okay. that's what I'm looking for with the dental side. You know, it doesn't kill all the bacteria, just the bad bacteria. And the, the revitin does the same thing. It's feeding the good bacteria. So we have a, a good bacteria microbiome takeover rather than, you know, what happened was the bad bacteria took over and created an acidic anaerobic environment. So, so that's my goal with all of these is raise the pH. You know, you feed deep bleach water has a high pH, you know, it's alkaline, baking soda is alkaline, ozone water, you know, we're killing, we're adding oxygen. So that's my goal with all of this is let's change the pH, change the microbiome. So, and so my next slide, this is what I want in a healthy mouth. Wow, you that's great. See the yeah. difference. Look at how empty this is. We're always going to have plaque. Plaque's supposed to be there, but I want healthy plaque. And that healthy plaque is, you know, and a more balanced pH. And there's nothing moving and grooving in here. That's <laughs> my goal. So, so this is this is what I look for, and that's why I love the microscope, because if you don't, you know, this is what you end up with. And look at how aggressive these spirochetes are. This is this is a white blood cell here. This is a red blood cell. Look at what these spirochetes are doing to that red blood cell. And this oh, is wow. a 20 something year old young lady who is pregnant. Oh no. This is what's happening under her gums. You know, I'm scared for the life of her child and I'm scared for her health. Look at how aggressive they are. I'm so impressed yeah. you got these little videos into your slides. Wow, yeah, thank you. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's really great. What's a nice Wish day. everyone came with a video slide presentation. <laughs> so great. All right. So as a biological hygienist, you know, I want the root causes. I want to test, treat, and retest. If you're not testing, you don't know what you're dealing with. We need to dig deeper. We need to look at the gut, the health, the sleep, the airway, breathing. It's not just about, you know, plaque removal. We need to learn about myofunctional disorders and we need to practice nasal breathing because nasal breathing is healthy breathing. If you're not breathing through your nose, you're not healthy. We need to help our patients and our people grow healthy, attractive faces because attractive faces are healthy faces. And then we need to collaborate because, you know, dentistry cannot work in a silo. So we need to look for nutritionists and functional medicine docs and their myotherapists 
and craniosacral therapists and airway dentists and allergists and breathing retraining DPECO specialists and working with ENTs and then, you know, address all the pillars of health because dental hygienists should be healers and not oral janitors. And I hate when people come in and say, you gonna clean my teeth today? Right, Yeah. right. Well, that's mostly what you get. Yep, it, you is. Know? it is. And that's why a biological dentist and a biological hygienist is so much more. So, so there Thank we go. You. I, lovely I made it to the end. Okay, lovely. We, I, I couldn't see the chat, but we actually got less so far than I, I thought. Um, but the question we got at the beginning, um, Barbara asked, she's hearing different things, what to do before getting your amalgams out, especially if high in mercury and sick. Uh, one biological sentence says, don't stir things up. They will give a binder and use oxygen at their office. So yes, I mean, you know, working with your primary care physician, your, your naturopath on how to get your body ready for the mercury removal, absolutely. And then working with a uh, dental office that does what, what we call smart mercury, um, you know, safe mercury removal. And, and yeah. that, that is, you know, one of the specialties that we do in a biological office. You know, my dentist and the dental assistant wear respirators and they cover the patient totally. And they take out the mercury in big chunks so that there's not a lot of mercury vapor. Because when you take a drill to a mercury filling, you get mercury vapor and the mercury vapor crosses the blood brain barrier and it is toxic. And so finding a dental office that protects you and protects themselves because it's, it's a very, very toxic place. So, yeah, I've, I've heard some horror stories of people have gotten a lot sicker. So I think yeah. you really have to do your research and even maybe decide if it is the right time for you to even do exactly. it at all. And that's why you yeah. need to work with your primary care physician, you know, whatever, functional medicine or naturopathic or, you know, somebody who understands how important that is. And, uh, you know, you, you shouldn't do it when you're breastfeeding. You shouldn't do it when you're nursing. You shouldn't do it when you're pregnant. So I wonder if you shouldn't do it if you have an inflamed brain, just in case it is, you know, getting yeah. some exposure. I know you know, the damming needs to be done just right. I think a lot of people use glutathione at the time mm -hmm. of removal. Um, yes. So there's, yeah. yes, there are lots of steps. This is not just to sit down and start drilling. You've got yeah. to do it safely. So yes, absolutely. And finding an office, you know, that's why I love being a member of the IAOMT because they've got lists of dentists in throughout the world. IAOMT? Okay. International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology. So they have lists of dentists all over the world that do safe mercury removal. Okay, one sec. I'll put that in chat. So here's that link for finding dentists. Uh, I don't think I put Barbara's website in the chat yet, and we can potentially go just have a look at it here. Okay. Online as well. So you have a newsletter people can subscribe to, right? Yes. Well, okay. it's my, you know, when I post a, a new blog, it will go. Okay. Out. So she won't be spamming you. <laughs> no. That's an info like oh. I do. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I wish I had more time to write because there's so many things I still want to talk about. Um, but I have a hundred blog posts. So, you know, it, right. it, it, yeah, there's a lot of information lot. there. Okay. Let's, um... So I can stop my share. Oh, all right. Let's uh, let's take a couple more questions and I'll show your website. There's one from Hal and Nicole. Can you see those, Barbara? Um, I'll pull them up here. Yeah. Have you treated oral like a planus, like in planus? You know, I mean that that is a an autoimmune issue. Like in planus is so. Oh, okay. I mean, we can certainly do our best. I would I would start looking at you know, working with the primary care physician, because again, it's a bigger issue. You know, lichen planus shows up in the mouth, but it also shows up in other parts of the body. So dealing with the autoimmune issue, again, the root cause, gotcha. we can use ozone and we can use the laser. So I, I can certainly okay. make it better. Can't contribute, right. Yeah. Okay. okay, okay. Do you guys see a lot of out-of-towners? Oh, yeah. All yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 
So Nicole, I don't know what to call this. What's an RDH? Is that dietitian? RDH, a registered dental hygienist. Oh, so, okay. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, cool. Twenty-seven and a half years. She's about to get an FDM. That's the certification I have. Um, I guess she's kind of looking how maybe for some of your mentorship, maybe you guys can talk offline about um, sure. how to kind of mix the two. Yeah, it's fantastic to mix the two because there just isn't much mixing as we <laughs> talked about when you first came on. So yeah, that would be fantastic. So she gave her email earlier. Um, okay. Nicole, if you want to, or you can contact her probably through the site um, and maybe give it again. I'm always impressed when people get out their email address. <laughs> I'm like, top secret. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's great. It's great access. I think it's very, like you said, wait, you're in your clinic. Like there's also times you have to just guard your time and not open it up too much. Okay. So here's her site. And I just, I want to show first the, um, here's a link for the product recommendations mm -hmm. and they're in different categories. So if you want to pick up one of the toothbrushes or see what it looks like, it's all in there. Uh, book recommendations, I hadn't clicked on that yet, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, and then here's all the categories of articles and the newsletter subscription is here. So great resource. Yeah, again, I found some interesting things about fluoride right away, um, braces for my son. So if you have any questions, uh, you can come on in here. Um, any last questions before we wrap up here live? Well, I thought this was just completely fascinating. I, I learned more on this okay. interview series than I haven't <laughs> met many months. So thank you very much. Uh, oh, yeah, pleasure. really uh, great. So uh, we'll put this out to our, our whole newsletter too, because you know okay. every now and then there's like, man, this is an interview I don't want anyone to miss. So we'll we'll get it out. And are you going to be on that dental summit this summer? Do you know about that? Um, you know what? Uh, is that with uh, with Bonnie and Scott? It's or, with Siobhan Sarna, it's her name. Okay. I am not. I okay, am not. I'll have I to connect Siobhan. you to. I know of oh, her. you do. Okay. She's having a dental summit and I was like, I I don't know enough to speak. And I think I gave her a couple names, but I didn't know about you at the time. So maybe we yeah. can connect you. Okay. Well, that would be awesome. fun. Oh, I, my I, other question for you is do you use Beauty Counter? Have you heard I, of Beauty Counter? I, I don't know about Beauty Counter. What is that? Beauty Counter is a beauty line for makeup and hair and skin, but it's free of like 1,600 questionable ingredients, Ooh. free of tested I, for heavy metals. Okay. So if that's an area that. you that's have, it, I'm going to send you a lip gloss because okay. yeah, it's often an area people do last because they have all their favorite things, but they're phenomenal and you it's like like you can return anything that's like doesn't work for you. Well, I obviously love makeup. And now that I know what is in commercial toothpaste, it's like I need I need to purge the rest of my life from uh, toxins. I, I you know. I, yeah, once I'm, your eyes open to it. Yeah, um, it's a game yeah. changer. Yeah, I always say like there is a natural way to have all your beauty and your fashion too. It just, you know, yeah. yeah, just finding the resources. Exactly. Um, exactly. Great. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for everyone for being on here. We always put it on YouTube a couple days later. So if you want to share this with a friend or anything, it'll be on there. We'll share that you with, with you as well, Barbara. Okay. Well, thank you. Barbara. Thanks for your time, everyone. Let me just tell you what's coming up next week. So far, nothing. <laughs> I think we're still scheduling the guests. So we had a little gap. So next week is a surprise. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Uh, Thanks okay, for being thank on. You.